Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, reptoids. I am Arom17Z here today, joined with the usual suspects of In the Kiln Boys, the Calibre Body, and Gigawatt. Yeah. Gigawatt. That's me. Yeah, that is you. That is you. Hi. Either way, today we are going through our 3 by 3s of our favourite fictional weapons slash tools kind of give a, a little bit of leeway here today but anyway we shall get right into it with Caleb's 3 by 3 I am? yeah you ah okay we are going to go through the uh, usual um, uh, direction. Direction. So, direction. Yes. Direction. Path. Whatever. Uh, we are starting off with uh, the blade of Mave of blades, Mave's dagger, daggers. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I the reason it's here <laughs> is because it's cool. I like Mave, but also because I didn't want to have. Two items from the same um, same place, so I it was in a way it was sort of just filler because I didn't I couldn't think of any other item to put on there that I like. But uh, but you know not to say that I don't like Mave's daggers. They're fucking cool. They're purple on the on the on the blade and they're magic and stuff. And they do a lot of damage. Well, I used to do a lot of damage um, until they took fifty. 50 damage off each dagger, which was bullshit. Um, We're going back uh, into criticism and then, and, again. And then they took 100 damage off of the pounce attack. Or was it 50? No, it was 100. Um, but they still do a little bit of damage. Um, yeah, that's my daggers. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. There's not much, there's not much to say with the Mave's daggers. They're just daggers. I will... Say I like that many some of the weapons in the game have different. Uh, I forgot what the word is, but like the dot in the middle. Hot, what is it? Cursor. Oh yeah, the the yeah the cursor yeah. yeah. Or the no. Hang on, yeah. There's shit in the middle of the screen, which tells crosshair. you where the middle is. Crosshair. crosshair. That's the bitch. Right. I like that some weapons in that game have different ones, and I'm most like I like when names the best. Mm. Absolutely. I like with Mavis Mavis how, um, because, because, you know, the certain people that we know, uh, complain about it, but what I like about Mavis Crosshair is that it actually tells you when Pounce is done, because the Ooh. things on the side of it disappear when you use a Pounce, and they reappear when Pounce is back, so it's, it, 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 it's, an, it's weird, because it's sort of, I guess, subconscious whenever I play Mave that I sort of know when Pounce is back, just because it's appeared there. Or maybe just because I sort of internally know the cool, general yeah. time. I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you what the exact cooldown of Pounce is, but just subconsciously I can tell, which is, um... Which oh, is Ethan's bitten back. With <laughs> <laughs> his fucking reply of his face, I'll tell you. Sorry, Caleb, you're saying. <laughs> um, yeah, that, 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 yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. like, uh... I like that when you play a character enough, there are some things you just know. Yeah. Yeah. I could um, not... The one thing for me, I could not tell you the range of a grumpy bomb, but I know exactly where to stand to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I remember at some point, because uh, uh, when you bought me those knives that looked like Mave's daggers, and I tried <laughs> to learn how to throw them exactly how Mave throws them. <laughs> and then I um, put a hole in my... Um, in my paper screen. Um, ah. Oh. Um, I suppose it worked. God, so, you Happy know. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we got that. Was it Comic-Con? Yeah. Would have been. Yeah, Comic-Con, yeah. It was. Um, yeah, that was cool. I can see them now. One, they're in different places for some reason. One is on the paper screen, and then the other <laughs> one is on a poster away from it, and I can't reach it. 
I could probably could, but I can't be fucked. The other one I could probably reach, but I also cannot be fucked. I can't but reach yeah. any of my swords from where I'm sitting. Which I can sad. reach Stormbreaker if I try. I can reach... No, hang on. I can reach nothing. The closest... I can reach the Mario Power Up Mushroom. That's about it. If I had... If I had the force, I could realistically reach my sonic screwdrivers. But other than that, um, the swords are on the other side of the wall, so I cannot, I cannot uh, uh, reach them. Anyway, that is Maeve's dagger. Daggers. Yeah. Um. Now we move on to backbiter. Um. Uh, so backbiter. Uh, That's for context, is idea. yes, is yeah. from Percy Jackson. Um, it is wielded by a man, the son of Hermes, Luke. And uh, basically, for additional context, in this world, there is uh, something called uh, Celestial Bronze, which is this special metal that absolutely fucking demolishes monsters, but does absolutely nothing to mortals. So... It's really strong against one thing, but weak against another. So what Luke decides to do is he gets one half of the blade, Celestial Bronze, so he can kill monsters, and the other half, Mortal Steel, so he can kill mortals. And in the book, the way it is sort of described is always in a, like a, a sinister manner. Well, and per, 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 Percy always describes it oh, as, nice. as um, being created. Uh, from a tragedy, which I just think is fucking sick. First time chat from viewer top sixteen, top sixteen, top six one six. Hey, <laughs> he likes the middle left. Yes, yes, yes. Top six. Top sixteen. Oh <laughs> okay. <laughs> the official virgin six one six. Hey, that's it. That's the one. Anyway, the back battle. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, so I, I like the idea how it's got that sort of sinister feel to it. Um, and that sort of... I oh know, it's cool. And especially because, you know, Luke's Luke. Um, I, I just think it, it, it really fits. I think, I think it even gets turned into a scythe at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I just... I fucking love that sword. It's sick as... I and I'm, I'm going to do it... I'll, I think in the in the series, like there are a lot of like cool blades because a lot of them mm. are very unique and precise in terms mm. of who's actually yeah. using them. Like obviously yeah. you have Riptide, which has more of that like oh. back history behind it, which I love, mm -hmm. and the whole mm. aspect to it. Yeah, but obviously yeah. I like the ingenuity of uh, Backbiter. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Backbiter. and uh, I mean even even the other ones like um, Piper's Blade, Catoptrus. Uh, which which also has has a history to it, um, I, and I do I do like how in uh, how in that series the blades and the weapons are sort of given a little bit more um, reverence because of course in mythology a lot of weapons are given given a degree of reverence, even even a fucking shield, which is also in the series is is quite famous that being Aegis. Um, so yeah, it, I, I I do like the um, the way it's it's sort of handled. And that's why Backbiter is on this list. Backbiter will bite you in the ass. On to... So you're telling me it's a magic item that can deal max damage to both mortals and gods? Yes. Yeah. I like that's it. That's incredible, right? Yeah, that, 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 is, that is pretty much it. And it's like, um... Because isn't in um The Witcher or whatever, how he has two swords, one for monsters, one for, um... Mortals. I like in this how it it, it just is just one sword, which I just find I find quite cool. Mm. And anyway, moving on from Increase the badass backbiter. The likes men and likes among us. Nah, well, okay. You could make the argument for the first statement, but for the second statement, nah. Uh, <laughs> Considering the top two on your fucking list right now, <laughs> and what your notes were for them. <laughs> 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 we have uh, evidence. Uh, the next one is the Spartan laser. They go pew pew. Uh, basically, 
It is a gun, big gun, um, that charges up and then just unleashes a massive fucking laser that demolishes absolutely anything that comes into its path. In in the game, it almost I think almost any almost everything is one shot by it. Um, I think easily every 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 um. Every creature, I think, gets dem demolished by it. Maybe not the hunters, but I think the hunters do get one shot. Um, the vehicles, I think, all get one shot. Maybe not the Wraith and the Scorpion, but I think that, I think they still do. Anyway, it does fucking tons of damage, and it's cool. Just just how it's designed and how it charges up, and then when it when it when it when well, it when it, when it eyes, it's Halo, boom. I think I prefer like the needles. Yeah, yeah, the needle is more cool. because of like the purple design, like the way they shoot, like the like crystal. Weapons. The design is more interesting, yeah. but the weapons not. Uh, well, no, it's actually pretty good uh, from it, my memory. Yeah, I, I like how I mean with Halo, there's tons, tons of unique and memorable weapons. So I mean, I, I could I could have filled up this entire fucking list with Halo weapons, but um, I wasn't gonna do that, but I could have. Um, because there's tons of them, and even like uh, gravity hammer. Uh, energy sword, uh, all those things. They're 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 also very fucking cool, and probably in terms of the in terms of guns, next to this is the um, the red, uh, plasma rifle, which is fucking sick as. But it's only in Halo Two, which is gay. Um, I, I Halo Two is a mad game, but I want to see that weapon again. Sick. Um, but yeah, that's a Spartan laser. Very cool. Very cool. That, that that's there because it's cool. And then moving up, we have Dawnbreaker, uh, which is basically a uh, sword that was given to you by uh, the god, this goddess of fucking light, and it fucking obliterates zombies and undead. When you uh... kill them, it fucking explodes, and either they die from the explosion or they get really, really scared from the explosion. And it's annoying because one of the companions you can get is a vampire. So if you have her around, um, she's most likely getting hit by that explosion. Um, which can be quite funny. But Sounds good to me. It, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool sword. I love the design of it. The sort of golden brassy and the, I, the, shiny, the shiny bit inside. Through my adventures so far in Skyrim, I haven't really encountered... A lot of unique weapons or items mm. and i know this yeah. one more because don't you have like a model of this sword no i have I like um a model of this sword before. i've i have nightingale the nightingale blade which is in a way actually similar in terms of like sort of shape ah. uh but it's the one i've got is is black and it i think in the game it does cold damage but I could be wrong. I can't remember the exact enchantment, but I, I think it did, that did cold damage. But it's cool because part of that set is also the Black Nightingale armor. And I love using this black armor with this bright fucking sword. Um, I think it's fucking sick. And even just the idea of it as this, this, this weapon that fucking obliterates and destroys the undead is fucking cool. Health steal, that's it. That's it. Um... Last time I played Skyrim, I just sort of went like, fuck you, I'm not doing any quests, and just ran uh, up a stream. And now I'm a yeah. little bit lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't want Fair enough. I just want to explore, just see the land, you know? I, I ran into a bunch of bandits. I go, pew, 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 step, step. Please. The bandits are dying. Step, step, burn with fire. Probably, if I weren't to have put Dawnbreaker, the second would have been Spellbreaker. Another, another, uh, yes, another uh, thing with Breaker in the name, uh, which is basically a shield that blocks magic um, completely, and it's fucking cool. But Dawnbreaker is the number one. I, in my opinion, it's the coolest sword in the series. Makes me want to play Skyrim a bit. Hmm. <laughs> Moving on to the middle thing, the green lantern ring. Yo. What a mad, what a mad fucking, what a mad fucking item. I, I mean, it's just, it's just so, it's just so versatile. Oh, fair enough. I, yeah. 
Um, but I'll, what I love about the Green Lantern ring, and I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it a bit later with another item on this list, but um, it's, it's so fucking versatile. Like, <clears throat> whatever you want, it just makes. It's like, you want a train, yeah, train. You want a sword, sword. And it's like for every, for any situation you're 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 in, it can do something. It can fulfill that need, and even just even just the other aspects of it, like the artificial intelligence within it, the um, the fact that it goes around and chooses uh, new lanterns is just it's just really really cool. And seeing and even the other rings, I mean the other rings do it of course, but um, just seeing them go off. Uh, when someone's died and it confronts someone and says, "Ah, yes, you are. You can become a Green Lantern now." And um, even just the little things, like it translating random crap, yeah, the warp gates that it has access to, just pretty cool. Just the little yeah. things about this, game. as well as it's nice to always to see like different people using the rings and seeing how they use it specifically, because every person's obviously <laughs> different. <laughs> so, of course, yeah. They yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got a massive fucking just plan. Um, not Mo not Mogo, Lobo. Yeah. Oh, Lobo. <laughs> I remember that. Good shit. <laughs> um, but then, but like, again, North that that Mogo. that that scene in um, uh, rebirth. The uh, was it rebirth? Where where they're all where where I think it was. How? Or someone? So I can't remember who it was. And they were talk. They were watching all the the human lanterns um, mm, uh, fight, and they're like explaining how each individual lantern uses it a little bit differently, and how that sort of uh, manifests. Like, um, uh, you know, Guy Gardner's one being more just power and just being fucking once he once he turns it on it's just like the energy just going it's just going out mm. um and then kyle how because he's a because he's an artist his mind is more abstract so when he makes things he can more easily transform them into something else yeah which i just found i just found it, it, i just i just like I that i feel like out of all the members of uh, like the human Green Lanterns, he fit the Justice League pretty well because he had that versatility to him. Mm, mm. Where he could really just change up, swap things. And obviously as an artist, he's a little bit more creative with how he does stuff. Mm. And I like that. I like items that, that don't just have a single use. Yeah. That you can be a little bit creative with them. Hal always felt very generic, which is understandable. Yeah, him. yeah, of course. And then, of course, you have John Stewart, who, because of his previous work being an architect and eventually uh, uh, a soldier in the military, like any time, like he makes a gun, it's like the perfect details yeah. coming together. It's like he just fucking assembled a proper gun, like you know, all the pieces to get out, and it's like, he just assembled it, and that that's that's how he does it. It's not he's just I'm... gonna make a shape of a gun and go pew pew pew. He's gonna make the fucking mm. gun. Mm. <laughs> I love his the design of his constructs, that sort of technical, sort of realistic look to him. Uh, I think his ones looked very, very fucking cool. Um, but I again, I do like how everyone uses uses their ring differently. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, you know, I think with a lot of fictional items, it's it's always nice to imagine, oh, what would I do if I had this? And I think with especially with the Green Lantern ring, it's like, oh well, I, there is so much I could do with it, you know. It's not just the same as... It would be different than how other people wield it. Which mm -hmm. is always interesting. It's always nice to also to see, like, different relationships between the other lantern rings as well. Because each lantern ring mm. is unique slightly in its own way. And just, like, obviously, as people usually know, like, green lantern rings are weak to the yellow mm. lantern rings. Or they can be yeah. actually powered up by the blue lantern rings. Which yeah. is always cool. Uh, you have the pink lanterns. And of course, like, and then probably the most unique ones are probably the white lantern rings and the black lantern rings. Yeah, yeah. One can rise the dead, and the other one can partially bring you back to life. Because, I mean, it has the yeah. life equation in it. Yeah, in yeah. In the world, yeah. universe. So, mm. you know. 
Yeah. Fucking cool item. Alex, do you have any comment? Uh, I like Lobo using it. I don't know. There's much. There's not much to say aside what, from what, what you what have. About so. Mogo, huh? You know, like Mo no, Mogo was planet. awesome. Mocha was fucking awesome. A giant fucking planet. Well, not a giant. Just a planet using a fucking ring. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I do quite like... Uh, every, that's You can have several different green lanterns, different types of lantern colors and shit, and every single user will apply it in different ways. So it's not just seeing the same powers over and over again. And it does require a certain amount of creativity and um, versatility that you just... Because that's the problem when you have too many options, you don't exactly know what to do, so you need to... So even if you do have all this power, you don't know exactly what to do with it. Mm. I like when characters, or when the writers can use it in creative and interesting ways. Instead of just, oh, he just creates it. Well, yeah, he does, but this is how it works. This is how it's done. I, I really appreciate that this, we that this weapon, this tool is something that the writers can use to creatively make their characters do these things and have these characters creatively and use it in such ways that you may not have even expected to. It's uh, it's both a blessing and a curse uh, kind of a weapon yeah, in terms of yeah. creativity. Yeah, that's true. And it's why, like, I mean, I've always thought it'd be very difficult to actually make a Green Lantern game because the sheer versatility of it like, I think I I think the only the cl the closest we got to a to a good Green Lantern game was fucking Scribble Nauts. That's because Scribble yeah. sort of has that same thing where you can create whatever you want. Nah, so Batman Lego Three, yo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole story and plotline sure. of that was the Lantern. Sure. <laughs> but I'm I mean more like mimicking the yeah. exact power of it. I think it Scribble looked, Nauts. Um... If you played Lego like Marvel Superheroes, the way they did Mr. Fantastic was just shit. Because yeah. there weren't too many uh, ways yeah. you could... Not that the not that Marvel Comics has done a uh, good job at, at showing how interesting those powers can be, but in the game, the um, the effects of those powers in mm. the game were just boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, is why, which is also why it was also interesting when they, when they did it in DC's games with Plastic Man. Because he, he became like an airplane jelly airplane. Yeah, that's cool. And he also became like, you know those bouncy balls? Just like those big uh, bouncy yeah. balls with like the, yeah. two, like the two handles on top. Yeah, he mm -hmm. becomes that and you can just bounce it. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, that's yeah, more yeah. unique and creative than what... Uh, the most unique thing with Plastic Man was just him gliding as a fucking sh thin sheet of himself. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, uh, it's yeah, very good. Very good. Uh, if no more comments, moving on to uh the first tool. I mean, I guess you could say, you could argue that the Green Lantern rings a tool more so than a weapon, but this this the screw sonic screwdriver is, the application. is is largely a tool it's very rarely used as a weapon sometimes it's used as a weapon depends but, if we'll, if we'll. But, but but very rarely um because it's a fucking screwdriver that just happens to be sonic uh just happens to make a little bit of noise um the sonic screwdriver i i, I like the idea of it being this thing that is just it is like a normal a normal everyday tool that's turned into this this futuristic thing and while i don't like how in the, like the as the series went on the screwdriver became a bit more magic wandy like it became a bit like oh we can solve whatever problem you need to solve i do like say in like tenths era where i sort of liked that middle ground where it was not just a screwdriver it could do things like mess with electronics and whatnot but it didn't it wasn't just like ah yes this this one screwdriver is gonna let me do all this shit and do absolutely anything i need to get out um one of my favorite scenes with the sonic screwdriver is in the day of the doctor when you had those three um doctors and they're all trying to like destroy a door from the yeah. level, <laughs> and and the door wasn't locked Yes. It's because it's a wooden door, it's an old door, so they couldn't unlock it with the sonic screwdriver. None of them tried to open the bloody door because they're so used to just using the screwdriver that they tried to break it down to the molecular level instead of opening <laughs> the goddamn door. Good shit. 
I just assume. <laughs> and then the door was left open so they could escape. Yeah. But they're idiots at times. Um, so they didn't. And I, uh, but I do like how. Um, also within that scene, they played it like if the door was locked, it was actually a good idea with having um, the War Doctor start the calculation and then the Eleventh Doctor's Sonic has finished the calculation by that time. I thought that was a really cool, really cool timey-wimey application of it, even though there was no reason to do that. But it was cool. And I also like the designs of all of them. You know, from the from the, I mean, I mean the second Doctor's one was a bit basic, but but from thirds to even um even elevens, I felt like maybe elevens was a bit magic wandy, but twelves and ten, uh, nine, ten, and twelves I think were the best looking. Nine uh, nine and tens felt like an actual screwdriver, like it felt like what a futuristic screwdriver would look like. Yeah. Um. Meanwhile, I felt like 11s was a bit magic wandy, but then 12s was still a bit magic wandy, but then it still felt more like tech. It it, it, it still felt uh, very much like it's a scientific device that is used to do various things than just a wand. Have you heard the rumours of, of the 14th Doctor? A lot of people are saying that it will be David Tennant. What? Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard those rumors. I, I don't know what to think. I uh, I mean I've I haven't been up I haven't been I, up to date with the news series. So. It, but, but it's like a lot of people. It's like the big news article about the Fourteenth Doctor will be um, David Tennant. And I'm just like, huh? <laughs> mm, mm. I think I saw a couple of days ago, really. But I, I don't know why I didn't look into it. I didn't want to. <laughs> Just I mean, I've, I've just sort of not been consuming much Doctor Who shit lately. Yeah. I've just, I've just, I don't know, Chimnall's just burnt me out. Um, Fair enough. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it at some point, but Jesus. Um, <laughs> I don't know. See, so you've complained to me about it so much, even I find this shit. I, I just, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. It it, 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 for the same reason, it's like, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like with Star Wars because I am watching stuff, but like, I can't, I just can't bring myself to watch the sequel shit anymore. I don't know. I just, I'm just at that point where I just cannot be fucked. And similar thing is happening with Doctor Who. Um, you watch all the shows, but. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the shows are sort of under a different, um, different Different, different people. management. So, different management, yeah. So, uh... I mean, I mean John Favreau think... is directing yeah. most of it. I mean, so... speaking of Star Wars... What a great yeah. transition. Yeah. Definitely intense. Fantastic. Yeah, well, that, that was... that was This was planned all along. Yeah. Just like the second item. I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh... No, no, no. yeah. This is the most, like, iconic weapon in, like, media. Or, like, I, 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 I was thinking about I was thinking about the other day and I think I, I came to the conclusion this is probably the most famous weapon of all of one of the most famous weapon in all of fiction mm -hmm. quite like because uh, I'd always assumed it was it might be something like Excalibur or Mjolnir something old but then I thought about it I'm like no if you pulled up the average person and asked them what Excalibur was they or and what the lightsaber was, more people would know what the lightsaber is than Excalibur. Now, the problem in, in, Excalib in Excalibur's defense, there are a lot Excalibur, of it. Excalibur is unique. Mm. Meanwhile, the lightsaber, though uh, the, the example here is obviously Luke's, it's there are multiple lightsabers, and I'm, yeah. when I put this down, it's more just lightsaber in general. Yeah. So in all fairness to Excalibur, it's sort of outnumbered. Mm. But still, more people would recognize. They would see they they would if you showed them a picture. Well, I guess Excalibur has a, also had multiple pictures, but yeah, I think more people would recognize a lightsaber. Yeah, like 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 what I said, uh, Excalibur has a lot of variations in um, mm. pop culture and how it gets interp <laughs> gets interpreted into different things. Yeah. So it's yes. not just one real identity at this point. That's true. 
That's true. It's a lot more varied, and like because it's just a, essentially a normal sword, it can get mm. mixed and mashed. Whereas a lightsaber yeah. is a very unique weapon, and you can tell anytime anyone else tries to make their own version of a lightsaber, it's just yeah. a rip off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, There's sometimes it's crazy. Modern representation. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of, um, of the weapon. As well so, as. there is, um, um, there's a lot of Star Wars content nowadays, right? Yeah. There's yeah. very little King Arthur kind of content nowadays. Yeah, that's true. And, and whatever there is, it's, it's usually poorly received just because the people kind of didn't put in as much effort as they could have. Nah, the most recent King Arthur, Legend of the, I forgot what it was called. And that's the problem. I forgot what it was called. Mm. It was supposed to be really dark, really take, and it was, but it just was uninteresting as a film. I don't know. And you that had Excalibur in it. You have you have Excalibur on your list. I have we'll I have an we'll Excalibur in my one. <laughs> yes. But as well, like Caleb even came to me and just said, "Put the he put came Luke's, to you, lol. Put Luke's second lightsaber down, the green one." And I just said, "The fake one, got it." And then that, <laughs> that that's how that's been our DMs. <laughs> yep. Because yep. if you don't know the reason why I said the fake one, it's because I know that this one, this specific lightsaber, was made with an artificial kyber crystal. Right. Ethan yeah. knows cotton. Ethan knows Star Wars. I know. It was weird, right? <laughs> because obviously during the time, like, where the fuck are they going to get kyber crystals? And they, they, they found a way to make an artificial one. And that, mm. that's how he got the, his second, his green lightsaber, yeah. <laughs> now, in terms of why I put the lightsaber here, other than obviously it's just sheer popularity, I also do very much like the weapon itself. Uh, I think the idea of having this, this beam of energy that is an omnidirectional blade, essentially, is is just really cool and i think especially within star wars i think why it worked so well is you have this obviously science fiction world but then you have a fucking sword and i think partially there is um not a mix-up i should say but people often attribute the power of the user to the lightsaber which is what gives it such a, a i guess a mythical status because in the hands of a trained user the lightsaber can go toe to toe with fucking guns, which I think is is what makes it such a cool looking item. I mean, of course, other obviously other weapons have been seen going up against guns before. It's not too uncommon, but I think the lightsaber, and especially against particularly Star Wars guns, I think it tends to go up against them a little bit better. I mean, because you know, obviously, Star Wars guns. I generally shoot slower projectiles and that these projectiles are energy and the lightsaber is also energy but the, the point is that it sort of it, it gives that sort of vis, uh, image right of this of this fucking overpowered magic wizard knight thing uh charging an army of, of droids or stormtroopers or whichever and and taking them on do you have a favorite Which, lightsaber? Probably Luke's. Um. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it, it's 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 changed over the years. Initially, it was Dooku's, from what I remember, and then I liked Vader's, and then I liked Darth Maul's, and then now I think it's settled to Luke's, because mm. I I just like the des- I just like the design. That being said, I also like. Qui-Gon's lightsaber, I think it's quite neat. It's quite nice. It's very simple, but I, I like that simplicity of it. Um, Alex, do you I like how it's almost lightsaber? just a stick. I'm probably going to have to go with Dooku myself. Just Once again, just like the design. Yeah. And um, how um, Chris Philly um, wields it and shit. I, yeah. quite, I, I think that's cool. But I don't put much effort. I don't put much thought into. Hey, that's probably my favorite line. Mm. I, mean, I do like. I like Ahsoka Tano's. Actually, no. Yeah, maybe. Ahsoka I I was gonna say Ahsoka Tano's as my favorite. Mm. Mostly because of the, the, the crab crystals in them. Yeah. Uh, the I mean the one post is not the ones in Clone Wars. Ah, the way she wields them. Yeah, the one she wields. The way she wields them. It's great. Um, definitely uh, among some mm. of my favorite fighting styles in the series. 
but the way the white lightsaber she has because the i like the i guess the theme behind that that they were red kyber crystals that she then healed they're no longer corrupted and that's now and then they take on that white color i like mm. that i really find that interesting mm. probably mm. sokatano's white lightsabers and then Dooku's. otherwise my yeah. favorite would be the umbrella lightsaber Yo! Oh yeah! I love that. That was shit sick. So much. That was sick. That was cool. I also want... like the one. The one they went against the um, the lightsaber that couldn't turn off, so it had to have a hilt. I find that mildly interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I also like what what I liked about the umbrella lightsaber is how it was. It was still like a regular saber. It was just funneled through this special attachment. Yeah. And that's what caused it to become an umbrella, which I thought was... But the umbrella cool. aspect to it. Yeah. She just bought yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> Mary Poppins in this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mary Poppins in the Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Other, other interpretations of lightsabers I really enjoyed was... Uh, there was a special gun in the, in the Darth Vader, Dark Knight or something series, where there was a gun powered by the lightsaber themselves oh that sounds and it's cool. like the most it's like the strongest gun imaginable that can just basically one shot anything yeah. because it's using the full force of the kyber crystal but i mean yeah you and then use it your lightsaber's fucked and then wasn't the um death isn't the death star powered by a kyber crystal i think so yes so yeah, that's then it's, it's, it's essentially not be essentially a death star laser yeah. in your hand yeah. which yeah fuck um, it's interesting because what I like most about Darth Maul's saber isn't even the double edge. I just like how the hilt's longer. Yeah. I just like how there's a longer hilt. If I had it, I would most of the time use it with just one blade out. But I just like it longer and just, I don't know, I find that, I find that really cool. Yeah. Um, I like any blade that, like, really feels unique. I, although I hate the character. Kylo Ren does have pretty Yes. Cool. Oh, Kylo Ren's like yes. If if it weren't for if it weren't for the sequels being what they are, I, it would be it, that might be my favorite. Yeah. Just because I like I like the cross guard. I think that's such I like a cross, cool, I like such the design. Cool. I like that it is the way it is because it's supposed to represent the instability of the character. Mm. I like that that was the intent. I don't like how they did it. I just like that, that was the intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I like I, I that. Like the how... lightsaber we reflected him wonderfully. I do wish the the lightsaber was a little bit more faulty because obviously it wasn't the yeah. best made of lightsaber and it was very clear to us that like this is corrupted. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay, so why does it work so well? I'm just waiting for the shit to explode. <laughs> could it could have at any point, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> I might be saying something controversial here. I am not a big fan of the dark sabers design. The dark. What, yeah. What's the dark I... sabers? Uh, the from button. Mandalorian and Clone Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Darth Maul had it, currently Din Djarin has it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I mean, I do like the idea of having um, a more blade-like lightsaber, and I do like the idea of having a black lightsaber. I don't know about the combination. I don't know. I, I, like, it's cool, but I don't know. Conceptual I, 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 is interesting, but I'm not nearly as invested in it. Yeah, I, I, think, would be I, otherwise. Think, I think the most interesting part of it was just Darth Maul using it with because he has mm. two blades with it. He has his normal red lightsaber, and then has this has the like the black lights, the black the the dark saber as his second weapon. It's kind of like Ooh. how uh, black by the used a little bit, except for in yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I like that it was like the lightsaber of the Mandalorians. That represents that power, but I don't like that it feels like it's trying to be an edgy lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, true. Like, the like Kylo Ren's was edgy, but that was thematically interesting. One lightsaber I really want but, to see. And it's just like an a axe. black lightsaber. I want to see an axe, <laughs> a battle axe lightsaber. But wouldn't you just have. Yeah. 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 That'd, be, that'd be. Different that'd be weapons are used very differently and specifically. So, I want to see more variation in it. Like, I know this saber pikes. Obviously, Jedi are like kind of reimagined as like samurai, and samurai yeah. use spears a lot of the time, and you don't mm. see a lot of yeah. spear lightsabers. They like, they do exist. They yeah. do exist in like the law. The uh, I think they're called saber pikes. Mm. Um, and they're just like the the hilt is fucking massive. Right. But the blade itself is fucking tiny. Let's, let's but I just want to see Whitebeard in Star Wars. 
<laughs> I'll be that if lucid. anyone has the force, I'm pretty sure he does. <laughs> you know what? I I think the dark saber would be mad if it was like a glaive. Yeah. How sick would that be? Like it's the dark saber's blade, but then it's like on a, a, on a glaive sort of uh, handle. I think that'd, I, I think that'd, that'd make be it sick. more interesting, mm. especially with uh, in the hands of. Actually, that's what he should do. They should modify it in the show. Yeah, because he had the spear before. I, I'm a bit annoyed they got rid of the spear. I, I thought I, it was I interesting. Understand. Him... Why? Because it was the um, they're not meant for offense. Yeah. But still, still I mean, that's kind of. Fun. I mean, that's kind of bullshit. They made the little fucking birds. <laughs> and that that was out of Beskar. Well, Beskar's not for attack. Well, what about the the little pin shits? What? I mean, it's 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 a, it's a small thing, but still, you know, I would have liked armor, though. Beskar. But then he's made little baby Yoda, the little chainmail. We assume. Um, so, bless you. You know, the spear in exchange for the chainmail. There's a baton yep. lightsaber. Hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just look at the baton lightsaber, that's interesting. There's a, there's a baton, there's a whip. Um, yeah, I know the whip. Oh. There's the, um, Shoto sabers, which are the tiny ones. Um. I like the, there was one, there were like clear lightsabers in, have you seen it all, Caleb? Mm hmm? Have you seen all of Visions? I think so. Do you remember the clear lightsabers? Maybe I didn't see all of Visions. I thought I did. Basically, the way the clear lightsabers were used in that episode, I really enjoyed that. Oh, you know what? There was this one lightsaber in, I think, the comics that I really liked. Oh! I... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna... No, hang on. Grab my... It's like a lightsaber. But... Oh, I, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the oh. ones that like hadn't got a color yet or whatever. Yeah, and then the, yeah. it would be on the user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The I lights... really like those. That was oh, cool. Was the lightsaber I'm thinking of is it's a lot like Darth Maul's in the, in the fact that it's a double, it's like a two sided blade, but the handle is in a wheel. So you can. Oh, see oh right. yeah, yeah, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Like they, 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 they're, they're a specific. Like, I have it. I have it. I have it. Where that? In the comics that use them, but I really like that. Like, it isn't it the Inquisitors? Of... Huh? Isn't it the Inquisitors? Yeah, I the think? Inquisitors. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Inquisitors use them, and I, I just really like that thing because it obviously <clears> reminds <throat> me of a character I really enjoy who uses the blade, but also has this extra step that makes it special, and then it just fucking spins, and then you get the fucking umbrella in, and then I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm gonna be right back in like two minutes. You can continue talking. Bye bye. Something I something I, I wanted to, because when Alex mentioned those clear sabers, something I liked about them was that uh, in 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 that episode when um, I can't remember who it was, but one of the Sith that were fighting um, uh, someone, and you could see that the blade became purple as they began to sort of um, wane, as they sort of started to become, go back to the light side, mm. until eventually it went from purple to blue. And I thought that was a really cool, I, I thought it was a cool way to visually show a character's um, uh, emotional state and thoughts. So I, I thought that was, I thought that was really cool. Um, a really cool part about those those particular those particular lightsabers. But yeah, I mean, I, I was just, I just sort of mentioned how those lightsabers show the mental state of the person wielding them, of how that one guy who his saber became purple from from red oh, yeah. to purple, oh, yeah. from, and then it went from then it went from purple to blue. I thought that was a really creative way of showing a character's mental state and yeah. how they how they sort of. They're alarming with the force. How that's how that's coming along. I found I it. That was really cool. That's how the kyber, That's not how kyber was exactly work, and I don't really, because I don't really like how that worked. But I did like how it was portrayed in the episode. How thematically, like the um, 
the characters yeah. uh, conflicted with what with that. I liked that, and I like what they. Did. I just don't like how they did it per se. I mean, I do find uh, the lightsaber interesting only because of the way the episode handled it. But with, conceptually, with, I don't really get it. With visions, I didn't really worry about that stuff because yeah, like that was, it's it was why sort I still of like the episode. It's why it, it, was, like, it was it was it was yeah. it was them doing whatever they want. Uh, so uh, I, I thought that was I thought it was fine. Uh, if they want to make a change, they make a change. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm fine. But yeah. If it were in the main, I'd be I'd have a bit of a problem, but it wasn't. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Enjoy it. Well, if there's no <laughs> more, if there's no more comments on um uh the lightsaber, time to uh jerk off. Us. I mean uh talk about uh Kyoko Suigetsu. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, this is the only anime weapon on on my list. Um, but Kokos we get to. I fucking love its power, man. What do you mean? I mean, Taylor's, I, I, Taylor's an anime. Star Wars true. is an anime. True. Um, I'll tell you what. Before Kokos we get to came along, I, I wasn't too much of a fan of illusions. Like they were pretty cool, but then it's like, eh, whatever. But then fucking. Kokosui Getsu's way of doing things and how the illusions are just like so fucking real that you can just cause other people to just stab other people, be, thinking they're absolutely like they think they're absolutely that absolutely they've won, but then they just haven't. Is just I, I fucking love that and the creative way that uh, Eisen utilizes it to fucking fool literally everyone except you know. Uh, the main character, um, even even having the final fight be affected by that 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 very same illusion sort of stuff, um, I thought was really really well done, and I, I think that's that I can that sword is what's made me sort of uh, like illusions more, and on top of that, what I like is that the sword. Um, Sort of is always itself. I mean, I, I guess we didn't see his bankai, but he, he, she kai at the very least. The sword didn't really change. It's just sort of it, but it's just illusion, um, which I quite like. It's not as flashy as others because it's not meant to be flashy. It's meant to be you meant you're not meant to know that you're under the effects of it until um, he wants you to know you're under the effects it of it. It also perfectly captures Aizen, a person who mm. is hiding his true intent, his true identity as just a mere captain this whole time while secretly doing all this really bizarre research and planning and plotting to betray them and kind of uh, he himself acted as the real illusion and like obviously in uh, in Bleach, a lot of the swords reflect the user themselves. So I like that aspect to it. Like, mm. because, like, if you were going into the whole, like, the Soul Society arc, you would probably fully think, someone killed this man. Mm. If you didn't mm. know the twist, you would think, so yep. someone killed this man. <laughs> but, yep. but, but that's the reason why it became such a big plot point, is because, nah, you pulled an Eisen. Yeah. <laughs> because <it's such> a... <laughs> it turns around. <laughs> yeah, I did it wrong. Yeah, you were dead. <laughs> the entire sword is just that. Mm. <laughs> you are dead wrong. You think you killed me? <laughs> you the, are dead wrong. The closest you did not kill blade me. that is similar to this that I think I prefer more is Sakenade, which is Shinji Hiroko's his his uh, Eisen's former captains. Oh, the, yeah. the perception bullshit. Yeah. yeah, the perception one. It, it kind of like falls under like that same category of like using your senses yeah. and mistrusting it. I, I just prefer that simply for the fact that it, it the the amount it fucks with you, and and yeah. the fact that he himself also like learnt how to speak backwards, so you wouldn't know if it's in effect, and you would fuck up yourself. I, I like the whole I'm you can fuck up yourself with my ability. I like that aspect. The only thing that, like, I, I would give to Aizen's Blade, however, is I don't see why it couldn't mimic that effect. Especially if it can hypnotize people. I don't see why it couldn't just say, well, now you see backwards. 
But again, it doesn't control what you actually do. But yeah. I mean, it can obviously control how you perceive things. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. But but still, I think they're both they're both really cool blades. And it, it's funny because uh, again, I I tried to keep um, it one per series, but I could have easily put others on Puck I want here. Um, yeah. I was tempted to put Benahime because I we fucking love. Have a Zonpok, but... I love the I love I love the design of Benahime. Uh, the, the 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 yeah, I I just think it's fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms cool. in terms of just visually, I mean it's also the powers are cool, but visually, I I I, I like the design of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't say that for many other Shikai. <clears throat> um, but yeah. Yeah, again, some many Zampak two could have made it here, but uh, you know, Eisen's a mad dog, so uh, uh, you know, his mad dog, his mad dog weapon is here. <laughs> any any other comments on Kyokas we get to, or no? No, not really. Okay. Now, you credit it for having the best moment in the series, or the most shocking moment in the series, or the yeah. Oh, I fucking love, I fucking love that scene. Just, just, just the way it's executed, where like they think they've won, and then you can just see on Ichigo's face, that, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what the fuck? What? The, what the hell are you doing? I would also like to give props to Gin Ichimaru, who found the only weakness in the blade itself. Mm. Mm. And that's what, and that's True. the fact that if you're touch, if you're physically touching the blade, no illusion will work on you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is a very interesting draw, Black, because it's a fucking sword. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're not, yeah. You're, you're yeah, really yeah. Thinking, oh, I'm gonna touch the sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ah, oh, yes, I'm going to go to the thing that can kill me. Um. But yeah, I I do like that it's not all powerful. There are weaknesses to it, and there are ways to combat it. Um, Only thing we never got to see was the Bankai. Hopefully, with the new oh, series, we get to see the, the full Bankai. Oh, well. I mean, it was implied he became stronger than the Bankai anyway. But it's still, still it would be nice to see. It would have been cool to see yeah. um, what it, what it looks like and what it even does. You know what I mean? Um. It is the infinite yeah. Sukuyomi. <laughs> 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 ah, Mother, are you wanted the infinite Sukuyomi? Here, I've got a sword that does it. I mean, in the Naruto world, isn't the moon technically our tool? Yeah. Slash weapon. Ooh. The moon is just like a prison. Mm. Man just full on made it. Anyway. I know when, um... In Jujutsu Kaisen, there are things like Bunkai. Basically, he had a character go like, I'm going to translate it to Bleach Shirts. He's, he's going, like, alright, time to activate my Bunkai. Bunkai. Something, something. And then a character shows up and says, you're not doing it. It was revealed in an interview that the char- that the author had no idea what that, who that guy, what that guy's Bunkai at all. So I wonder if Kubo even knows what he wants for uh, Aizen's Bunkai. Mm, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Some bunkai have been shown outside of the, uh, outside of the manga. Shinji Hiroko's uh, bunkai was shown in the light novels. Just interesting. Right. Things. Like I'm just saying, like some that we never saw were in other sources. So I'm I'm, I'm sure right. he has an idea of what it could be, but I'm not sure if he's fleshed it out as much. I mean... That could extend even to like, because I mean, Madara was never shown. We never saw his uh, Mangekyo ability. So I wonder if Kishimoto knows what the fuck it is. If it I mean, is Kishimoto, like, um, I expect I expect Hubo to know what he wants for Aizen. But yeah. with um Kishimoto, yeah, true. Um, considering he didn't even know how to fucking kill him. Um, yeah. yeah, fair enough. Well, if that's it for Kyokus Wigetsu, we are moving on to the Omni Matrix. Uh, I think that's, I mean, okay, first of all, the thing I love about the Omnitrix is like the, the shape-shifting aspect and 
shape shifting is uh, my favorite power in stuff. I just find it like such a cool ability. And I think the reason I love it so much is because is, is for the same reason as the Green Lantern Ring. It's versatile. Like whatever you need done, the Omnitrix can do it mostly, right? I mean, if you've got the base version, if you if you don't got Master Control, I mean, um, I guess you're pretty fucked in some circumstances. Like, I don't think there was ever an alien that could heal, except obviously Alien X. But Alien X is is mostly always what the do you exception. Mean heal as in heal others. Yes, that's what I mean. Sorry, yes, yes. I mean, healing I others. I mean, fire can heal himself. I mean, there's like some ways where you can apply first aid, but like, not, there's nothing where he's just like, ah, heal, healing beam or something. But nah. m- most of the time, and I mean, even, but even it once makes to makes sense, though, why that isn't. Because if these are species, it's like, not a lot of them have a healing ability. Even that's true. In nature. That's true. Um, but like, I mean, with master control, I would assume there would be. I would, ex- I, I would assume some sort of um, plant uh, alien. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and the thing is, is that when you have master control, and I think people often, when they talk about the Omnitrix, they often talk about the power when it comes to um, Alien X, but I think what people forget is what's actually m- more impressive about someone who has the Omnitrix is that if they've got master control, all of a sudden, the weakness they have instantly changes it can instantly change and their strengths and weaknesses all their abilities has changed you think oh well uh uh stink fly he can't he if you hit him with water he's fucked okay now he's transformed into a fucking fish and um now the water i've been pouring on on him is just not gonna work as well and it's for that reason that i think it's so powerful because especially even when he goes up against someone else, if they've got a particular weakness, then he can just transform into something that could best fight that weakness, or at the very least transform into something that wouldn't be affected by that person's strength. And it essentially, it essentially nullifies all species advantage. Like there is no, unless the species is some species that absolutely has no form of DNA whatsoever, right? Basically, if you if he goes up against someone from another species, be it Saiyan or whatever, the advantage that person has when it comes to species can be nullified. Because then all of a sudden, they can't fight you with the benefit of their species. They need to fight you with the benefit of their experience mm. and their other strengths, which I think is something... Or another thing that's very interesting about the Omnitrix. One thing I like is how grounded the, the Omnitrix really is in terms of the aliens who uses it like if you're of a specific gender it alters things like obviously with the tetraxes the females are always stronger so gwen's tetrax will always be stronger than yeah. ben's tetrax I, yeah. I just like yeah. little things like that yeah and i like how there's also the age thing as well mm. and also oh, the fact that one of my like... favorite episodes phantom of youth Oh, that was beautiful. Yo, what I, a fucking love, I love that episode. That, that was sick, guys. Mm. Um, but, like, when... There's also the thing where, like, it makes you a prime example. So it's why when uh, uh, Ben is fighting Luma, the reason he wins, even though she's a female, is because even though she's a female Tetramand, he is the prime example of a male Tetramand, yeah. which sort of balances things out meanwhile if you had gwen as a tetramand yeah the f- prime example the female version would be greater than the prime example of the male version which i think is which i think is another really cool thing about the omnitrix so if you're a shit member of your species not only will you lose the advantage of your species but then the person will be will be stronger than you <laughs> which i just I, I i just love i love when he scans uh liam and he just becomes this Chad fucking eagle, and Liam's just a chicken. <laughs> and Liam's just a fucking chicken. And um, I've I've, I've always found that humorous. Uh, oh, oh, Wrath. He's not wearing any clothes. Yes, I love it. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> but that's also but the that, other thing that's it, it, it's it's mind-boggling just to think 
how grounded a cartoon series has made a power system. Because not all cartoon series really do this. Other than mm. things that are either based on other sources, like comics, which is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mm. DC Comics, Marvel, any mm. other comic book publisher. A lot of them already have the backing. They just got to play with it however mm. they want in the cartoon series. But Ben 10 doesn't have that. And it just, it's so interesting mm. to see how grounded everything is in some sort of knowledge that we know in our world mm. to be true. Obviously, he, there's some uh, weird shit that happens, which I'm not the biggest fan of, with the whole predator prey situation, and the um, and I think the alt the idea of the Alter Matrix is a bit weird, in some point. I, I like the Alter Matrix. I, I think it's a. I think it was a really creative idea. I think some of them, like the reasoning behind some of them, were weird. And like I, some of the the transformations. Yeah, in particular, like the right. reason was just like, oh, in a in a hundred year war, like this is what he'll turn into, uh, like things like that, which aren't really grounded in what we know to the world itself. Yeah, fair mm -hmm. enough. That being said, that being said, within their world, I will defend Humongousaur in the sense that we do know that there are biological creatures that have mechanical parts. Be it like, up I mean, upgrade was created, but. The point is that there are species that do have Goop. metal parts to them and, and such. Goop. So, yeah, uh, but but still, I, I do also like the fact that his powers aren't just... Oh, it gives him powers, and it, it's why Ultimate Ben was... Uh, Ultimate Ben 10,000 was uh, stopped, or why they didn't use him again. is for that reason, because what where Ben's quote-unquote powers come from is he's just another species. That's it. And then you could argue, well, it makes that's because it makes that species better. It's sort of making him a extremely athletic version. But a lot of where his power comes from is just he's another species. Mm. Right. And even some species have weaknesses that his actual form wouldn't have, like Ripjaws. Ripjaws can't stay in, stay above, uh, above the water for quite, for very long. Meanwhile, base Ben obviously can. And I like how there is, in some cases, advantages to just staying human. Yeah, fair enough. I and appreciate even, when they do that. Even because when Ben... Sorry. I, you know, um... I was in, like, Deadpool 2. They said, um, why is every alien just a better version of a human? Why can't there just be, like, little inbred mm. little species throughout our, uh, in our space? Like, Canadians. That's a joke. <laughs> Uh, I like when um they actually do show that there are some disadvantages to being certain aliens because mm -hmm. like Saiyans are just better versions of humans that also yeah. can turn into monkeys, which is just a better version of a human. Yeah, yeah. And then of course you got your Supermans and your shits. I like when in especially in Ben Ten because they're they're not just like human looking things; they're actual different species with their mm. own advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And Ben yeah. has to suffer and balance all those. Yeah. That's great. You, yeah. you were saying something before, too. I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> um, Sorry. I, I was, I was going to talk, I was about to talk about, like, how, like, the obvious versions of when he hits, like, the peak of his species, like, Bullfrag. Bullfrag's a fucking ch like, a unit. You will not see anyone else like Bullfrag, because that, he becomes, like, a legit chat, and everyone else in that entire species is either fat or... Or just a normal shit toad. Yeah. And, and or or a tail, which is a different thing altogether. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this man um, just walks up as a fucking chad. No one else is that peak. <laughs> bullfrag was great. I oh, fuck. I love. I love that. I, I loved when he got bullfrag. Like it was such a cool. That was such such a cool idea. Because it's like, well, what if you get an alien from the other species? That the like the enemy aliens, and it's like, ah. Oh, that's what happens. You can just pretend you're part of them. Yeah. I think before um, how they went about it, which was really cool, how he was just locked in mm. that, that form for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it's even um, I I remember I remember what I was actually going to say. Um, how uh in Ben Ten in Ben Ten K's episode, his first episode, where um, he is sort of like he sort of forgot what it was to be Ben. 
And then by the end of it, he transforms just back into Ben and just kicks Vilgax's ass um, as Ben. Um, I think I think he does use an alien a bit, but he, 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 he kicks his ass also using just himself and his hoverboard, um, which is really cool. I do like when Ben himself also has, you know, I also stuff. like the fact that there's even just logic behind the reason... Why hmm? Azmuth created the Omnitrix? Yes, because true. his previous uh, technology was used to kill and destroy. Yeah, oh, I could have easily put Ascalon on this list, but no. Um, but Ascalon was is, was also fu- was also very cool. Uh, I I even liked that whole backstory of when he created Ascalon and watching what it did to other species. Um, and then yeah, him creating the Omnitrix as a apology to Zenith was was really cool. And then him losing faith in the Omnitrix after people ended up using it as a weapon anyway. Um, Which, and people well, craving it for a weapon. I mean, dynamite wasn't meant to be used as a weapon. Yeah. But then it became something yeah. so great. So that's why, like, uh, Nobel <laughs> made the Nobel Peace Prize because he didn't want to be remembered for the destruction of man. Yeah. Yeah. Also, most advancements of... Uh, the modern age uh, come from the military, yeah. and then they can get um, applied into modern day use. I think it was GPS got used for um, military operations, and eventually it was made publicly. Was military or space? One of those two. Yeah, things either come from military or space. Sounds military. It's one of those two things. One of those two things technology comes from. Um, but Not I think always, but usually. Yeah. I also like the different sort of designs of the Omnitrixes. It's always interesting to see the artists go wild and create a new thing. I think probably my favorite is Benton Case, um, where it's sort of like a gauntlet. Um, not a gauntlet, but yeah, it's like an it's, yeah, sort of like a it's 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 yeah, a, a glove slash gauntlet, and it looks fucking cool. Um, but then I I, I do also I I do I have warmed up to the um. Speak. Like, the you know, new Omnitrix. You just reminded me. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. My favorite Green Lantern ring is when <laughs> Hal Jordan is wielding a Green Lantern gauntlet. Ah. Uh, that was sick. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I like the different designs. Yeah. Um, and you know, even even the other uh, Omni matrices, um, you know, like uh Ben 23's one um I mean Albedo's Bizarro. one was pretty cool just the red yeah Bizarro uh, yeah um Benzaro. yeah Benzaro um even I'll tell you what I even liked uh Albedo's Ultimatrix how like he actually had the ability to transform without anything but it was unstable so we needed a device to sort of stabilize his transformations, yeah, it sounds like and then lightsaber. even and then and then even allow him to then well, fuck the the crystal he used for the Ultimatrix in Omniverse didn't look like a carbon crystal, but it was a crystal, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Is there a lightsaber? There's, oh, there's, yeah, there's probably energy swords in Benton, tons of them. Um, but yeah, the Omnitrix is fucking cool. And uh, that is why it is it is here on it my. It sounds list. like you're finally done talking about your. I know. <laughs> three by three. Man has a lot to talk about. I know. It's worth I talking do. about too. I do, I do. It is finally. And now you. My. I got like a sentence for like three of mine. So. And now, and and now, and now you yes. will have to talk about yours. Yes, I do. <laughs> and the first one I'm talking about is basically just a stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. It's Why? <laughs> Why him? Why his? Because I like the stick. I, 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 uh, the, the actual blade is called the Toyo, Toyako Bokuto. And the reason why I put this here, it's the sword that Gintoki Sakata uses. And the whole reason it's here is more for what it means to him as a person and the story behind Gintoki and the, the tragic past that he has led. I like the fact that he is just using a wooden blade to beat the ever-loving shit out of people, and he's still just as good as when he was in the in the wars that 
when the aliens like first like showed up and whatnot. And he's still able to beat people with actual fucking katanas. Yeah. As well as how he like the the whole reason behind him even just holding the stick and not using an actual goddamn sword is because of that whole connection with his past and the fact that he had to kill his own master in terms of everything that happened and I like the fact that Gin just uses this stick to beat the ever loving shit out of everyone. It's just the whole mm-hmm. I, I like people who have just the most simplest weapons but they can still just fuck you up with the pure ability that they have themselves. As well as Sheer being experience. something I see every day because I have a statue of Gintoki on my desk with him holding the sword. So it's partially always in my mind because I see it every single day I sit at my desk. So that's the main reason why it's here. It's, it's more because of what it means to the character itself. Yeah, I, I can't really yeah, say I get that. more than that about it. It's just the stick, really. <laughs> what, what, is it, what, does it say, what does it say on the stick again? Hmm? The actual symbols on the stick. What does it say? Um, what does it say? <laughs> Wasn't it revealed in, like, some gag episode? It was, like, some collectible from a spa? Yeah, I think so. Wait, let, let's look at this up. Lake Toya. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Lake Toya. It means absolutely fucking nothing. Yeah, it means nothing. You think it means something? Nah. Just stick. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's all I can really say. It's a surprise about. stick. That's, that's all you can really say about this one, I assume. Like, there's nothing to really say. Next one. Uh, the Dominator. From Psycho Pass. What I call the most <laughs> iconic... Um, anime gun, simply because of how unique and designed it looks, and just the fact that it was very merchandisable as an item. I certainly yep. don't have one. I want one. But the whole thing... I should get one. Yeah, I should. The whole thing with this gun is, it scans you, and it scans kind of like your mental health, and if you are below the score, it will shoot a lethal blow to you, and kill you, because in this world, you have these officers... Who have to basically kill normal people so that the mental health of this world can stay a stable rate and not be betrayed by the shit and stress and it's a whole shit about morality and all that crap about killing just normal humans <laughs> basically look into it look into your mind and get yeah. like is this person a danger is this person a threat mm. and the uh, big thing in the series is what constitutes that what makes you take these people's freedom based on but on the but even the potential of them just not even being very well mm. and then just upright fucking killing them with these but I also weapons like... that that dictates that you are you are this evil thing that must, that must be destroyed I, I find that interesting but I also like how it does scan you and if it scans you and says that you're a threat the the shot it will take is just so absolutely lethal but if it scans you and it says that you're okay yeah, the, the, the shot will do nothing. Yeah, the, it won't actually fire. Yeah, it won't fire. It'll just... <laughs> the, gun only, the gun will only shoot if it says, hey, that's a, that's someone worth shooting. As well as just, like, the cool, unique design to the gun itself. Especially when it opens up. Yeah. It's just like having, like, just a gun handle that just put, like, a couple blocks of triangles on. Like, there you go. <laughs> I'm gone. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this gun. <laughs> Cool. Uh, I like the way the anime is it um, animates every single moving part of it as it opens up. Oh yeah, yeah. All the different lights and the actual effect of the blast is fin- is fantastic. Yes. 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 Now moving on, the yes. only thing here that's not from an anime, <laughs> <laughs> the hidden blades from Assassin's Creed. Now when it came to Assassin's Creed. Part of me was also thinking about a few other uh, weapons that I really like in the story, like uh, the Tomahawk from mm. Assassin's Creed 3. I love the fact that the Tomahawk itself is just the Assassin's Creed logo, essentially. Mm. And I love all that. But the whole idea of the hidden blade, which is just something so 
normal and unique. But I also like how they used it and kind of made it their own, in a way. It's an idea that has been around for more, obviously longer than the game's been around. Something that was partially used in the past. But I like how they, they engineered this to be something a little bit more special and just such a signature weapon to the assassins in basically almost every game. <laughs> mm. And I love how it, it, it is just that blade where you have to be close. You have to be have that personal touch and connection to just be close and just stab into them, like destroying them, sucking them. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what happens. You just get stabbed. Out of the Don't make it gay. I, uh, why not? <laughs> ha, ha. <laughs> Why, 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 why can't he make it? Yeah. Game? Yeah. This is this is finally a weapon that Caleb can talk about on my list. <laughs> because it's weapon. gay. Yeah, sure. Good weapon. Good weapon. Good weapon. I don't know. Uh, a lot of the other weapons in the series, I think, are just so unique to the person who's using them. Mm. But I like the fact that this is like the weapon of the assassins. Where mm. it really feels like this is the one weapon that will always be with you when you're fighting or doing anything else. I like when they uh, combine it with the gun. When they put the hidden gun in there with mm. as, as well as the hidden blade. Mm. I think that was that that was quite cool when they did that. Then obviously later on they said, fuck this, we're just going to give them flintlocks and actual guns. Yeah. But, but it really is just that really cool unique item that i feel like you don't really get to see a lot in mm. other games and other media points but i feel like it should be used more i can understand why it's not because of like the the idea of why it's used and whatnot and usually assassins and shit would be very different it'd be cool if like this was a weapon in naruto if they had a weapon like this in naruto for like the yeah. that'd, that'd be yeah, cool. yeah. like if an, you had a special arm who used this yeah. other than that you don't really get to see a lot. <laughs> yeah. Sad to say. It's a cool idea, and I, I just like the whole nature of how it's used. Mostly. Mm. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> Moving on. We have Dragon Slayer. Otherwise known as Guts's Sword. Yo! What the fuck? What? This sword, this man's sword can just obliterate everything. It is one of those, I, it's one of those things that perpetuated the, uh, the concept of just man wielding big ass blade. <laughs> and if this sword, I, I, I just want to say one thing about the man. Uh, <clears throat> his nickname is the Black Swordsman. If you think Kirito is the real Black Swordsman, go fuck yourself. This is the real Black Swordsman. All right, continue on. But he's he's white. Yes. He's a white man. So? So was Kirito. You call him black? Kirito is not white. <laughs> anyway, so what the fuck is the sword? But Batman's the Dark Knight. Mm. He's dark in the night. Yeah. That, he's, he's, he's white, but then he's black at night. Black men. I love, I, I, don't, I don't know why, I just like when I made Radoth right say they're, you're not black. <laughs> You're not like, the best it's, people it's, that are in the down. Anyway, so this fucking cunt, right? This isn't even a special sword. It's just big. It's just mm. a big slab of iron that no one can lift. But this kid, he was given a long sword at the age of four, so he's just really used to big swords and just absolutely fucking loves it. There's supposed to be fucking demons and shit that he's supposed to fight, and he just slices them in half with overwhelming force. What the fuck kind of sword? I, I think it's more interesting of what the sword actually means to Guts itself, as the as an idea similar to Gintoki, that in the way that this sword was his only comfort in his life. And no, a, a, a sword more... was the only comfort in his life. Yeah. In that one. Yeah, obviously. But like, the sword that he would always hold and like hug and whatnot, it, it was the only thing that could keep him safe from the, the life he lived, which is... Truly the most tragic backstory in all of anime. 
Um, like a lot of people I think agree with that statement but um, even just the blade itself him wielding it just running around even just when he gets like the full armor on and what what just so badass I love this. I don't know I don't know what to say it's just the just the man using big blade big blade yeah Iku 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 and it means so much Ooh. to him as a character as well yeah I don't know what else to say about the weapon because it really is just a giant slab of iron <laughs> and yet it's used in like such a weird thing just to beat the shit out of zombies it's nothing special there are more special weapons in the series but it's just a slab of iron that's really all it is oh yeah I just like the fact that he's using just off to womp yeah he's gonna womp ya yeah yeah he's gonna slash ya he's gonna slash ya Mm, mm, mm. I know, I've talked about guts a lot in other episodes. I don't want to really continue on <laughs> talking about guts more. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The next weapon, my middle weapon, is the X gloves from Kaikyo Hitman Libon, which in the series, um, basically, there are a special, essentially like special items where you can unlock and gain special abilities and how you use the power system of the dying will flame and his comes as his gloves and when he's and like the first fight i think we see with these gloves he's versing another person to potentially beat him and take his spot as the boss of the bongola family elite and that man had guns he had two dual, dual wielding pistols and this man just fucking took it on with gloves and it's just such a weird thing to everyone to even just have guns because obviously in this world a lot of people have either a specific weapon or tool that they use over over just something that's so different and how he controls the flame i don't know it's hard to explain I'll, you'd you'd really have to see it in action to understand why it is i love this weapon or this i mean yeah i guess the weapon because he uses it to fucking blocks the shit out of people <laughs> But yeah, yeah, just really cool. I also really love the design of the gloves themselves, as well, and how it has that just like that that field of energy and like the how the sky ring is connected to it all and, and all that crap. I don't know, just cool. It's just cool. It's just cool, man. It's just a cool explain. weapon. Cool weapon. Cool. It's cool. Cool, yo. The next weapon on my list is the Kurikala. Which is the blade from Blue Exorcist used by Rin Okuma. Fuck man, fuck. Mad so cool. So cool. I like this blade. For the simple fact like this was one of really my my first um the first times I went into an anime and a blade was being used as such such a special item because Blue Exorcist was put back like one of the first animes I was really watching when I was getting back into anime and um I just love the design the hilt the blue coloring of it and how it connects to the events of the past and like the blue knight and how it just holds all of um Rin Rin's demon energy in it and the blue flames of the devil that he has inherited as well as I like that this blade wasn't just specifically designed for him himself. In fact, it was actually made as a normal blade long before it sealed away his own power. As well as there was an event where they really need to fix the blade and they needed a spare, rare, old metal. And there was only like one person who could really fix it in the entire world because they're because essentially because of the events that occurred when all those people got killed a lot of people lost their lives including the creators of that sword <laughs> and just the struggle in terms of trying to fix the blade itself and how it's used and just like I remember because I really want to obviously read the manga with my boys here but <laughs> leaving off with uh, Rin starting to learn how to actually control his power and just like just 
Light slash. A light slash. This great flames. Light the candles. Don't burn the fucking candles to the ground. And all that crap. I don't know. It's just a really cool weapon. And it was one of the first ones I really got to see as like a katana being used in a really cool way. To just be covered in a blue, a gloriously blue flame. Mm. I, I I love the blue flames of it. I think they they were really cool, mm. and it's it's you know more unique than just like you know orange flames or whatever, mm. and it really differentiates him between say a regular fire user, mm. being that you know. I I love when like his uh his his classmates first saw his first saw his power actually be released, and some of them had PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how tragic it was, and just like Kim being the devil's son is such a weird shit thing. Ah, uh, cool. It cool. It cool too. Yeah. yeah. A sword that I will one day have in my collection, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on my list is Benehime. Beautiful sword. Beautiful sword, beautiful sword. Big woman, big dicks. <laughs> this blade, honestly, kind of, once you get to see its pure Bankai, it helps you really understand Kisuke on a whole new level in terms of how he was able to do so much and how, how really ingenuitive his ability is. Because he could have been stabbed, he could have been cut in half, whatever. But with his sword and his power alone, he could just come back. Because that's how strong his Bankai is. To just rejig everything and connect himself. I just love the fact that, alright, they're in a domain. He just opened a hole in the domain because of his sword. <laughs> he just, he just uh, stitches, uh, let's have a hole in this. Alright, we're in. Uh, yeah, we're in a force field. Yeah, <laughs> he just bypassed the force field. It's like, okay, yep. <laughs> I, I love the way that, like, it's disguised as just, like, a normal cane sword. Mm. And the, the hilt is so unique and so different to any other blade as well because it's just so straight <laughs> compared yeah. to any other sword that really just feels like it's just a normal katana. This feels like it's like it's some sort of other subclass of, of sword categories from the East. But I don't know, man. It's just a really cool weapon, and I love his Bankai, the way he uses it. Ooh. Something went flying. Is it your bounty? No. Why would it be bounty? Well, bounty grew wings, why not? Can she not fly? What? Your dog can't fly? Weak. <laughs> My dog's human, I don't know what you're on about. Ah, oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Humans have a, have a problem with flying. Yeah, that's right. Benahime. Uh, uh, what else is that cool about Benahime? I think, in my opinion, it's the best looking sword in Bleach. Just, just appearance wise, it's the best looking. I think Kisuke is one of the smarter characters, not because of his ability, but because when someone asks, "Hey, what does your ability do?" He's like, "Fucking find out, bitch." <laughs> I also oh, yeah. like that like he, he when he was training uh Chad 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 got confused about why he couldn't train him properly with just like his Shikai and whatnot and it, it made a lot of sense when you get to really see his Shikai because yeah I don't think that's a really good ability to train against because you're just gonna get fucked <laughs> really mm -hmm. and got poisoned and just went like okay let's just cut all the poison out of me just let it spill out of me. <laughs> no pussy. No, no. There are other really cool de design and looking blades, but his is just so d different and unique. And even some Shikais don't even look like Shikais. I mean, the Akiyakuchiki Shikai is just flower petals. Yeah. <laughs> awesome fucking shit. But it's weird to kind of say like okay that's his shikai when i just associate that more with his bankai which is it's just a greater version of his shikai yeah yeah 
It's just ah well what what do we what do we give Byakuya? Ah yes, why don't we just take what he had with his Shikai, but we just add more petal. Huh. I like it. Toshibo's Shikai is just him gaining dragon, ice dragon things on his body. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His blade barely changes. Well, his blade gets like a. Oh, it does change a bit. It. And, and it and it's um the guard changes. Yeah, the guard changes just by gaining yeah. like an extra um shuriken design. Mm. Yeah. Um. Shinji's changes with like the unique circle thing that he could just put his hand in and control the sword. Mm. Um, Rukia's changes, it had like a white ribbon and bell to it. Mm. Obviously, um, Renji's changes to a fucking, some sort of berserker blade that just, a whip thing. A whip blade. Yeah. Um, there are some blades that fully change its design, obviously, uh, Ikaku Madarame's blade changes to the bloody spear that's also, uh, like a nunchuck shit. Like a yeah, yeah. Long nunchuck. Or some, one of them turns into a scythe. Kai and Shiva's turns into a trident. Things like that. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. It's cool, it's cool, man, cool. Cool, cool. Now we're going into a very weird realm. Wait, I just thought, I like One Piece. I like One Piece. <laughs> I like One Piece. <laughs> so, my, my next blade is something that's very weird in terms of the One Piece world. It, it is, the name of the blade is Kokoku, which is the sword that's wielded by Trafalgar Law. And the reason I say that this blade is very weird in terms of the world it's in is because in One Piece, all the blades are ranked in this sort of, like, Mato ranking shit of how good it is and who made it and artisans. But not all blades are like that. Most of the unique <laughs> blades are like that. But Law's blade doesn't have a ranking. It is an unknown blade, as well as we know that it is a cursed blade. Which in mm. one piece is something that's very weird because it just wants to cut. I also love how Law uses the blade and just the design of the blade itself is so unique. How it has like a like the puffy thing as its guard, which is kind of cool because it's like okay, he hit yeah, it. it's something soft, it's something nice, and if a sword tries and hit it, it it's still there's still metal underneath it, so it just softly hits, and he can just <laughs> also I like it's just how he uses the blade like injection shot how he cuts people it, like it's a, he uses it as an extension to his devil fruit as well as everything else as mm. well as recently where he just coats his blade in the room itself and can control anything that his blade touches and can even mm -hmm. modify his blade to become massive and cut right through one of the biggest enemies in the series <laughs> <laughs> And the way that he can use like all the th different abilities in the operating room, as with his sword, I just really like the the way he uses it specifically, as well as the unique design to it. Because it's just mm. puffy and fluffy. It's like it's something that's so deadly as a sword. It has just a nice little childlike nature to it, of just being soft, soft and cuddly. Yeah. yeah. Now, my final weapon is another One Piece blade. <coughs> Which is named Enma, specifically in the picture, because I really couldn't find a better picture. Uh, I'm talking about the purple one, not the white one. And those two blades are also made by two different people. But they were, were kind of made together by the, by the people. Who were... um, but yes, Enma is the name of this sword, and fuck me dead. Fuck me, dead is it the fucking blade? <laughs> in One Piece, a lot of the swords actually do have personalities, and not is none is more prevalent about learning this than Wano Country, the the arc that we are currently in in terms of One Piece. And Enma, for fuck's sake, drains the ever loving shit out of your haki anytime you use it. It's a thirsty bitch. 
And it and despite being a thirsty bitch, it's one of the most destructive blades in the series. To the point where the first time the person tries to use this blade, and a lot of people don't even try to use this blade because the blade itself will kill you and drain you of all all of your haki. The per just like okay, go cut the tree. Cuts the bloody cliff off with one slash, and it just drained the entire arm of the person who used it to the point where it was just like a stick, and it just took too much. And then he screamed, at him, "Give me back! Give me back!" And his arm got better, but whatever. It's just a ridiculously powered blade, as well as other things that are occurring with the blade, because obviously it's a very recent sword, like how it interacted with, um, just specific music of the Wano country and how it kind of reacted to the world around it. I don't know, it's a really cool sword, and it's a really great, amazing sword, uh, and it's done a lot, and it just adds so much depth to the idea of these swords having personalities because this is the king of fucking hell and not many people can wield this blade. It is so ridiculously cool. I love the sword so much. It is probably my it is probably my favourite weapon in all of fiction just because of that those ideas. It's just such a badass sword. I also love the whole mythology behind it being fucking Enma, the king of hell. Mm. Yes, that's my list. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't have I don't have too much to say about those two. Mm. I'm not nearly as into the swords of One Piece. Moving on to Alex's list. Oh, I have a list. list. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so I've got my here. I've got right here a three by three of uh, weapons and tools and shit that some of you may recognize. From starting at the bottom right, of course, we've got the ODM gear from Attack on Titan. Um, I uh, what I like about this is that these people have been attacked and under the tyranny of the Titans for hundreds of years we don't know how long per se but they've these people are constantly these titans are constantly attacking these walls and they need to find a way to fight back against it so they develop a technology which essentially allows them to fly it will allow you to fly through the fucking air and slice exactly where you these people have fought titans for so fucking long they they've uh, been able to create technology specifically to counter it. They've got cannons on their wall. They know exactly where to hit. They know exactly where to hurt. They know exactly how they work. They know exactly how they need to work in order to counter them. I like the ODM gear because even among the strongest titans, if the right person is using this gear, they will be able to fucking slay them. Whereas other conventional weapons would not be nearly as effective as just a guy in the fucking air with blades. The reason this is on my list is simply because... This is one of, if not the best weapon, these people, under hundreds of years of oppression, have been able to build in order to specifically counter their oppressors. And those oppressors being fucking 10 meter tall giants. That will heal from any attack except for the one at the back of their neck. Which is very hard to reach. The reason they're here is because of that. And that's one, yeah. I actually want to say how ingeniously unique this weapon truly is like yeah sure it's blades and whatnot but the whole mechanical side to it and how they're actually operated and used mm. by the creator standpoint that is incredibly ingenuitive and unique like i'm um, to the point where you're essentially creating a lightsaber but obviously much later on because of just how unique and how it's used, the whole scaling and flying, and the fact that if a blade breaks, they, there are multiple blades that you can just attach to the hilt. Yep. Mid flying through the sky, so it's a lot more productive, and just such a really cool weapon 
and just how it's used. I, it's just the whole ingenuity side of things. Like, if you can... When I was searching this up, like, the first thing that really comes up is literally just a bunch of pages and sketches of how this gear works, how this gear operates, the functions, and the how all the mechanics kind of just work and flow together. It's it's a really cool weapon, and, and it really shows how great design and fiction can truly be. Yeah, in, in, the, in the series of Attack of Titan, you know, the eye, the eye catches exist. In One Piece, it's cool character sh- shots of wanted posters with uh, music playing with it. In Attack on Titan, their entire, char- their entire information, sh- like information being revealed to the public, a great number of those are just on how these things work. How the blades, they understand that these blades will not survive against too many titans because titans have very thick skin. So they just have several spare ones that can constantly be ejected and apply new ones. The gas tanks that they have, they can only stay in the air for a limited amount of time for how much they can hold. The gear that they're wearing needs to be exact and cannot be too heavy, otherwise they can't be as nimble as they have to be against these titans. It is in the in canon several decades or centuries of innovation which has led led up to this fucking and wonderful piece of technology and then the way it's used later in the series i fucking love i just think it's a really ingenious weapon in terms of (laughs) when you're creating a story to have something just so unique Mm. but even characters in the series like what the fuck that's ridiculous these things can kill titans mm. <laughs> uh that's what i want to say about a dm gear <laughs> i kind of made the ice head what i want to say about yeah Go um do you have got anything about the the gear uh, and nah, they're cool <laughs> yeah pretty cool all right cool <laughs> the next weapon what's this <laughs> What's this? Like this is... It's Excalibur. What? Excalibur? That looks kind of like Excalibur. Something I've always praised Fire Force was on, a Fire Force on, is the way they have... It's a fire-based power system, and the way that several characters can use and apply it in different ways. Here we have Arthur Boyle. Uh, this man can control, can generate and compress fire to such a degree that he can, he can create a fucking lightsaber. So he does, and he's his character's been raised in a way that he's tried. To, he's conditioned himself to believe he is a knight. He's a knight in shining armor, and the stronger he's he king believes Arthur. his way to be, yeah, he believes he's king Arthur. He believes if he believes he is one thing, that will. If he believes he is strong, he will actually become that strong. If his belief is suddenly shattered in any way by other characters, he suddenly gets weak. I like that this character can get stronger based on his ridiculous belief. So if people just go along with the fact that, yeah, this is King Arthur, he's funny on his side, his fucking sword will burn brighter than you'll ever than you'll ever see. This character becomes one of the strongest under the own plus of his own not illusion. Um delusions, that's the word. I, I so mean, he's got this. He's got this sort of uh, bladeless uh, sword called Exp- Excalibur. Through this, he channels his firepower to create a lightsaber. <laughs> he b- being one of the only plasma users in the series is fucking already broken. Mm. Then, <laughs> then there's his second weapon, as shown here, uh, and a, a very durable old man who <laughs> <laughs> who he decides to call his shield of masochism. An indestructible shield. I just thought it was funny <laughs> that he just picks up a guy and then it's like, "This is my shield and my now." I... And if they and if they tell him otherwise, it becomes <laughs> so they have to go along with it. I also love the fact that Company Eight has like a manual to other companies of how to deal with Arthur. Yeah, <laughs> every <laughs> to do list. This is how you deal with our delusional plasma. <laughs> <laughs> and if they don't they just get a dysfunctional idiot who's like but, but I don't have my Excalibur it's definitely one of the most unique uh, types of flame abilities that we've seen in the series especially from someone who is a gen 2 he's gen 2 yeah I f- think so yeah, for a gen 2 user 
um, which obviously isn't the strongest. It's just kind of average in terms of a lot of people in the fire company are Gen 2s. Uh, it's just such a really cool way to use it, as well as him being like the only counter to a specific character who would fuck everyone if it wasn't for this man. Or <laughs> Yeah. I like that it is It is a lightsaber. He is wielding a lightsaber, and it's not some kind of crystal. It is powered by his own drive, his own belief that it is actually Excalibur, that he is actually this warrior that can fight this, these uh, these particular enemies. I like that it, it is a lightsaber, and there's no denying that. But I like the way that it is used, mm. uh, especially by with the character. delusional dumbass. A delusional idiot who, who thinks he's top shit, and because he does, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, aside from the shield and masochism being funny, I do want. I still think this is absolutely. And me jerking off the Fire Force power system once again. I could have chosen Marky's fists. I could have chosen uh, Benamaru's broom. I could have chosen their fucking vehicle for work. Or anything. Anything that what's his Obi's Obi picks up. Anything Obi has in his hands. <laughs> uh, I said go with Excalibur. Oh, excuse me, doing a big stretch. This here, this next one, if we're all done with Excalibur, is just a simple blade. Uh, the anime contextualizes that he gets a second blade from somewhere else. I'm going to be talking about the one his father gave him. A massive part of the themes of the series is about Thorfinn growing to understand that he has no enemies in this world. He's not here to fight people. He's supposed to be... He's supposed to live. He's supposed to learn how to live, how to be human without just fighting. Even though he can, he's learning... He's supposed to learn how to live, not how to kill. So he steals a saw, a tiny blade from his father. His father tells him, no, this is... You have no enemies in this world. You're not here to kill. Don't do this. And even after his father dies, he still doesn't listen to what he was told. He then goes... And becomes this murderer, this war weapon. He himself is a weapon to other people. And he still has this blade with him. And one of the, the best moments in the revenge. series. Yeah. One of the best moments in the series is that is the loss of that blade, in my opinion. Once he no longer has that weapon, once he no longer has what his father gave him, is when he himself can properly properly learn to grow. And that eventually manifests himself into a complete weapon ban in Finland. I the reason I put them here not so much because of the weapon, but because of how they influence and what they mean and meant to Thorfinn and what they meant to the story. And you judge me for having a here. stick. Hmm? No, <laughs> <laughs> skin <turkey. laughs> I mean, we, the one in the middle is also stick. It's just a stick in it. I wanted to try and put things on this list that are things I can talk about, things that I find interesting, except for one of them, to be honest. I do think my favorite weapon in uh, in <laughs> in Vinland is probably Askeladd's sword, more just because of how good he is with it. Otherwise, I think uh, Thorkell's axes are cool. <laughs> no, 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 Thorkell's tree trunk. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the mastery of all these different characters with their weapons mm. uh, is always a delight to see. Yeah. Just, just uh, like obliterating a king. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 love Vinland's argument. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the next one I want to talk about is the Juzo Inui. Now, even though this is a weapons list, he this character is big on not being a weapon Look, on, on being independent on, on your list, so i want to talk about that frankie i wrote down frankie as an honorable mention <laughs> the reason i put juice over frankie i don't know i'd say frankie's got like nipple lasers we you know but we'll, this we'll, guy we'll i've actually through, got we'll some go themes to talk about honorable mentions at the end we'll go through all, all at the end <laughs> okay sure so i put this guy under weapons even though he tries to classify himself as something not. He tries to create his own identity. In this world, there are extensions. Basically, robotic parts that replace your limbs. And there are a lot of characters that have them, especially because of the war. And some of them just get it as a buffs, pretty much. 
there is a great number of people in this society that fear these extensions that they could use them for because they these extensions parts are usually stronger than their original human limbs and then there's a character with an actual functioning gun for a head that walks around he's trying to make his own identity he's trying to stay away from being that person with the gun for a head that can fire actual fucking bullets from his fucking head he doesn't let anyone touch his gun it's not something he wants to be known for he's not the guy with the gun he's Juzo Inui the fucking detective he'll solve your problems he has guns that he'll use that isn't that he does not like to be like, he does not like being objectified by what he has in his head he can't remember his past so this is all he knows and he's trying to break out of that mold and then later in the series we find out that that gun for head is one of many weapons that his, this man has in his body so he is a true proper living weapon and once again and he only ever uses that when he has something to fight for when he has something greater than himself that he feels he needs to use this power for because otherwise why why use it why why make himself a weapon if people are just going to see him one way and at some point he has to accept that that is who he is and this is the abilities he now has and the way he can use them to better the people around him I love my guns, life, man. See, I couldn't talk about that with Frankie. <laughs> I just go like nipple beams. Oh, I could have done the fucking sunny because that was awesome. The fucking the go the beam. Anyway, that's me talking and jerking off. No guns, life. Its whole system and the themes around that, and why I like Juzo as a main character. That's probably the last we'll talk about characters instead of weapons. Because next we got fucking mash band mash burn dead's wand. <laughs> Why don't you take this one away, Ethan? Let's see what you have to say about Mash's uh, about Mash's, um, about Mash's wand. Okay, so he goes into the wand store, just like Harry Potter. You're thinking, oh, he's gonna get something. A wand's gonna choose him. There's just this heavy stick on the ground that no one can lift. And he's just like, oh, don't mind that. You gotta find a good wand. He just picks it up and, okay, that's his wand now. It's literal. it's the definition of just a stick, bro. Except for it's, like a, it's more like a metal stick. That he can just warp and change because he's so physically strong that he can turn into whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> it is a tool, an extension of his own strength. It is the definition of just the stick, bro. <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones, but that thing it will scares me. From you. <laughs> that will cripple you. It's also just the way he uses the the wand specifically in the series, and just you never know how he's gonna use it. At, at one stage, you might turn into a fucking baseball bat randomly. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Something I credit the series of Mashal for is the creative use of how this guy with ex extraordinary mus uh, mas um, muscular ability is able to use it to counter actual magic. The the use of this wand is another wonderful um uh display of this ability it's the actual full metal rod that he's able to as an extension of his own strength and i find that really amazing as well <laughs> aside from the absolute fucking hilarity of, <laughs> of the first time he uses it <laughs> and that's the extent that it being an extension of himself and an extension of what he is on the story, on it, what he is in that world, is one of the reasons it's on here. Aside from the way, some of the ways of the story. Just love, I love Mashal, man. The fuck? <laughs> okay. Um, are we ready to jerk off Kenpachi? Axe. Yes. This is Kenpachi. This is his axe. I think it's really cool. That's all I have to say. I chose several things in this list based on what I want to say about them. What I think is how I can talk about them a lot. But I kept Kinpachi's action here just because it's really fucking cool. Don't you want to That's say it. what its real name is? Nozorashi. I forgot what it's in. Oh yeah, Nozorashi! Ah. Big fucking axe. I forget the things these things have names sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know the you know the the, the 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 like the core fundamental part of the, the power system of a Zanpakuto is that it has a name. Yeah, I forget them. 
<laughs> that's it. That's. Kimpachi's a fucking beast. And he gets a massive fucking uh, fucking axe to slice the cunts with. There's nothing. You can be a fan of uh, Kyusuke for how cunning he is, how his ability can rewrite and redo how other abilities work, how Aizen's ability can say, no, fuck you, this is what's actually happening. I like Kenpachi because he has a big fucking axe. That's really and there's very, that's And there's very little... Destroyed everything with just an axe. There's very little more to say about it or why I like it. it. It's, it's just a big fucking call, big man with an axe. It's hard to call it an axe, even. It's more like a cleaver. It's just a giant fucking mm. cleaver. Yeah. This man is a butcher and he will cut you per shreds. Yeah. That's essentially what happened. I love that it's like, I like this for this reason, I like this for this reasons, man. That's it. That's all I have to say about Kimbachi. Next is the, unless you have anything else to say. No, nah, not really. Lizarashi. I want to you do the only non-Japanese originating thing <gasps> on my series, on my list. It what? is the web shooters. Uh, I've talked about web shooters a lot uh, previously as my career as a, a former career as a YouTuber. And I've forgotten most of what was in that YouTube video. So I'm going to talk out of my ass. I like that this is a... Uh, it, base level Spider-Man is really just a stronger person, right? Aside from this, he has a greatest uh, senses than most people, greater strength, greater speed, greater resistance to everything, right? Mm. It's the way that... He was... Oh, yeah, he can cling to walls. I forgot about that part. Yeah. The web shooters... Tomo Guy's trilogy is great, but I never liked that he didn't have the web shooters. The web shooters are a... To me, a symbol of how ingenious and incredibly uh, smart that Peter Parker can actually be. How he's able to create this fluid and create this ejecting system to allow him to mimic, essentially, flight. Because this man cannot fly. But he's able to, and if you played any of the recent Spider-Man games, or even if you play Fortnite, the webbing, the uh, the way you can swing, is just fantastic, right? The way that these are used to just not just fight, it's not just creative mode, double tap space, and you're in the fucking air. It's actual versatile movement, and the way he uses the webs to his advantage, how they can stick, how he can keep, how he can manipulate enemies, move, pin them in place. I think it's more the applica- the reason why he made them and the application of them is why they're one of my favorite weapons in fiction. You say something? Uh, I, I watched a video all about uh, the the physics of uh, the evolution of Spider-Man's uh, swinging in ge- in video games. Because I have yeah. the, like the older video games. So, mm. so I have like the first case where you can just basically swing. There's no real physics behind it. It's just like swinging. It's basically like a slow flight. Moving on from yeah. that to the point where they actually physically need a point of origin for him to attach to, to swing and glide to a yeah. specific direction. And then it just kept evolving and getting better and better. Until you get, obviously, the newer games of Spider-Man. Just something oh, the PS4 like games, that. the way they swing are just phenomenal. phenomenal. I've played very little of them. But I remember this, the webbing, yeah. the swinging was just fantastic. Because it really is just a, a, a unique kind of style of just going around. Like, sure, you could be long and just... But that's still... You, you have a lot more control over it. You have to fully be... You have to fully understand the physics and know how to really do what Spider-Man does proficiently. Where yeah. others might just fucking hit a tree like Miles Morales does in Into the Spider-Man mm-hmm. a few times. It's not something you can just pick up. No. It's big on how experienced you are as Spider-Man. Hmm. How you can use it to make an extension of your body instead of just these weapons. How it's gone through years and years of experience to understand exactly how these webs work. Understanding how your body needs to flow to move through it. I love that this character can't fly yet. He's made this... He... Peter Parker, 
with his Peter Parker skills, has made this technology to allow him incredibly versatile movement throughout a massive city. I find that incredible. And there was a whole generation when we were young who never knew that the web shooters even existed. Yeah. <laughs> because of those bloody movies. <laughs> I think it's a. I think it is a bit bullshit that they dissolve after an hour. It's just an easy way for the writers to say, "Well, then he doesn't listen." Um, I like another feature. I like in the comics, he has to like it. T- the amount of pressure you put onto it is depend. It, it, it will only. You can't, no regular person relies on his spider strength, right? It requires his strength or anyone with a lot of strength to actually activate the trigger. So he can't accidentally activate. And even then, he has to double click it to actually eject it. So you have to. So he's also rigged it in a way that only he knows how to properly activate and use them, without fucking up his life as um Peter Parker, if he's got the suit underneath. Mm. And the other applications he can use it. Many uh like web constructs he's made in the comics, like a fucking web boat or shield, or a glider. A bit ridic- bit ridiculous, but I find it interesting. Well, how he that, stole that's that's. The yeah. I find it interesting that uh, in more modern day uses, people are actually more creative with how he can actually webs. In the old ones, they portrayed this creativity as, look, he made a glider. I like that. Which is not great. that it. I don't like what they did back then, but I like the, the what their intent for that was that this character is smart enough to be able to use these webs for more than just swinging and webbing people up. Which is why I'm a little bit excited for whenever they're going to make the fourth Spider-Man film, because obviously Spider-Man now is going back to the basics, no more mm-hmm. large-scale technology that makes his uh, webs electrocute people or whatnot, and all that mm-hmm. crap. I-, I like the fact that we- we're now going to get back into that sort of like the, the sort of Spider-Man that is. Yeah, a-, a big part of what I like about it is that. Peter Parker's. So it wasn't too big on Tony Stark actually making all these upgrades with um mm. with um whatever that AI's name is. It was cool for the film films, but that's not really what Spider Man is, and now that he is this, hopefully we can see more creative uses with it. Surely. Like actual fucking capsules to actually use. But didn't he always make them himself? But he used uh, he used to because he had a um, more rudimentary type. So I like yeah. that. I like in Civil War the little we got original Spider Man, and even actually in Homecoming yeah. suit, so when else we got original his attempt at being Spider Man because that's what Spider Man is. He's not all these fancy tricks or all these suits. Is what Peter is able to accomplish with his own ingenuity and his drive to. Be res- well, this responsibility that he, that he holds. And realistically, the only time he never really needs a web shooter is when he has the symbiote suit on. Because obviously it acts as an extension of the suit. Mm-hmm. Or the symbiote, I should say. The symbiote's always been interesting. Yeah. I like the, um... It's, it's, it'd, be, it'd be another function without Peter Parker, but then again, it's an, it's its own yeah. that it has. So that's interesting. Yes. That's why I put the web shooters here. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of ways that it shows who Peter Parker is and what he can accomplish without his spider powers. It's why I replaced Stormbreaker with it, because we can talk about Stormbreaker being, ah, oh, THUNDER! Like, thunder. or, I mean, only for that matter. THUNDER. Uh good shit. But uh yeah. I also I also yeah, then it's since I mentioned Stormbreaker, I also don't like that in Ragnarok we were like, hey, it's thought that the sto- uh, Mjolnir is only something you can channel your power with. You don't need a weapon. You don't need that. You're the god of thunder. You can do this yourself. You don't need Mjolnir. And then the next fucking film, we get Stormbreaker. Yeah, and then the next yeah. film, we get Mjolnir back. But whatever. I mean, they only put Mjolnir back in there for fucking Cap. True. Let's be honest. And also to show that he was still worthy. So actually, I don't, yeah, have, that's I don't, I don't have a single problem with Mjolnir, to be completely honest. But it's just a bit iffy, like, hey, no, no weapon needed. 
give him give him a weapon anyway. It's cool, but a bit weird. Anyway, that's not the topic today. Next is Moomin Rider. I fucking said I wouldn't talk I'll talk more about weapons while I talk about the people. Justice and then I Christ. fucking lied with Peter Parker and it's full fucking fib with Moomin Rider. This is all Moomin Rider has. He's a hero that's trying his absolute fucking hardest. He's really trying. And he's got this bike, this bike that symbolizes his own justice. Of him working his way to help... What the fuck? Get the fuck out of my room, you shitty fly. Um... Yeah, it's, fuck it's, off. Anno- it's been annoying the fuck out of me. Fuck off! Fuck off, we should have fly. Um... Once again, this is more the character and the way that uh, it's applied through it. Especially in the scene you've chosen here, Ethan. What other scene? That is... What other best represents the fucking bike? (laughs) Good. It's always Moomin Rider's attempt to help people. It's the way he inspired... He's a fucking bard. He's bardic inspiration fucking... (laughs) Right. That's, that bike symbolizes the best he can do, the best he can to serve justice, to help the people around him. That bike is his tool for getting around to making sure he's able to save the day when he when he can. On a week. Right? And even if he can't, he still fucking will. Right? Mm. He'll try his fucking hardest. Even when all odds are against him, it's him and that bike against the fucking world, and I'll support him 100%. <laughs> and that's what all the people did when uh, before Sin King punched him in the face. But until Kate Baldy showed up and went, <laughs> oh, it's one of my favorite arcs just ever, just because of Moomin Rider. Just Sin King, just because sides much strong. Genos trying his hardest, even the the snack guy that pissed his pants, like he's fucking trying. And Pru Pru Prisoner showed up, best arc ever. Max and Stinger Fuck Lightning Max, they fucking shit. they started off dead. Fuck him. Yeah. Well, they weren't dead, but still. Boring asses, right? It's about Genos and Pre-Pre Prisoner and Sonic and fucking Movement Rider and Saitama. Like, fucking legendary. I, I Love just, One Punch I, Man. I just like the thing where it's like, uh, Movement Rider's like, t- taking Saitama on his bike. He's like, are you sure? I can probably walk faster than this. <laughs> but Movement Rider's like, no, this is my fucking justice bike. We're going to do this. I've got it handled. Standing up mode, go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, love him. Bro, it's just that the, what that bike means to him, what it can mean to other that symbol for everyone else in that world. They know Moomin Rider, are trying his fucking best, but it's because they know this is just a guy who's doing everything in his power just to get up and help. That inspires the people around him. That bike is that symbol of everything he stands for. Even though it's a fucking bike, he crashed and broke into a fucking sea monster. It is everything he stands up for. Even And even later in the series, other times he stands up against other foes. It's not nearly as cool as a Seeking scene. Which is why I've only been mentioning it. But he continues to ride for justice. Fuck me, I love Moomin Rider. Uh-huh. That's what I've got to say. <laughs> Uh, my next choice, I don't know why I didn't remove it, but I kept it here. It's the Splatoon Roller. Out of all the weapons here, this is the only one I use in-game. Uh, but it's also, I think for me, a good way to talk about what kind of weapons I like and how I like to play, and sometimes even how I like all weapons. Yeah. And the me, Roller... It represents my training to use... You... Sorry? To use the Blaster. Oh, fuck you. Geek shit and die. I need a least favorite weapons list. It's going to be a 9x9 nine nine of every blaster possible in that game. You know, we, we can do a 3x3, three three, three, sorry. We can do a least favorite weapons list. Yeah. It'll just be blasters, and I'll just be swearing for an hour. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, the roller is my favorite weapon in Splatoon, simply because it is actually rather simple. It is just a massive paintbrush. You walk around and you paint the fucking floor. One of the greatest piece, one of the greatest feelings, the biggest dopamine rushes I've ever gotten, is just painting the floor, and then a cunt explodes underneath me because they were just hiding on the floor, and I just walked on top of them. One of the best fucking feelings on the planet. Would highly recommend. Right. 
This weapon is not particularly fast, it's not particularly tanky, but it does hit hard when it hits. A Splatoon 2 is even allowed even longer range. Once you're close, it's a fucking battle to the death. I don't know, man. Like, any time anyone uses a roller, they're essentially the tank of the team. They are. But in Splatoon, there is no tank. There is no yeah, health. You have 2 HP and you do 100 damage. It's not... So yeah, the they play the role of the front line, but they can't exactly take hits for enemies or block any hits. That's what the umbrellas are for, if anything. Yeah. This guy is your heavy hitter. Goes in, and he fucking hits. I've played in almost any video game a, ca a, a weapon that does this. This is why I tend to go for shotguns. Even if snipers do more damage, they are long-range weapons. Shotguns up close, boom damage, fucking gone. For some reason, I like characters that just do one sh spot of explosive damage. It's one of the reasons I like Bomb King so much. Tick, tick, tick. Boom. He's gone. All right. He also works up close. Maybe I should like. Maybe I should play Terminus more, but he doesn't do much damage. I like. Burk. I like um, weapons that don't. It doesn't particularly. I like play stars where it's not heavy. It's more heavy hitter. You can. It's a min maxer, right? I minimize like. Okay, defense is great too, but I minimize speed and I minimize mobility. And defense, and I just output pure damage. It makes me, it makes you a fucking threat on the battlefield, but only if you ignore it, if you don't pay attention to it. It's one of the reasons I like to use the stealth abilities with this fucking uh, roller in Splatoon, because if I'm if I'm if I'm invisible underwater, I pop up, damn, bam, they're dead. It's my, it's easily my main, and the only thing, I, only specific to those types of rollers. Other rollers have quicker attacks or heavier attacks. This one is the perfect fucking balance, and it's one of the only few times I can say I'm genuinely good at a weapon or a game with the roller in Splatoon, which is one of the which is why it's the only video game because it's one I like using. That's my talk on the roller. Anyone have any other things they want to talk about? Maybe in Splatoon, maybe they're in their own play style. Why not? I, I literally, I literally remember no weapons except the roller because you talk about it. I usually in Splatoon <laughs> maximize mobility. So that's why I usually use dualies because you can flip around and dodge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're a bastard. <laughs> also, Bro, the fact if... that, like, obviously you're using two, two guns. So if one gun misses, you also have the other one to take the shot. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Mm. Bro, when you fucking. When I'm, like, rolling in front of. When, like, obviously there's a slam attack with the roller, but, like, I love walking around and killing guns. The fucking dualies, unlike most people, they go like, ah, fuck, I'm dead. The dualies are like, fuck you, dash, dash, and they kill me. That, that Those two dashes give ample space to wreck me. Go fuck yourself. Also, go fuck yourself when you jump over my roller. Oh, that's like, if, if crushing people, right, is the greatest dopamine rush, the biggest hit to me is when you j jump over my Like, excuse me, how fucking dare you? To, to this explain this... A lot of the times when we try and party up to play Splatoon together, we always put on the opposite team. So, for us, it's always just, alright, let's kill each other. Fucking hot. And then you beat my fucking ass because I choose a, a shitty, unmobile, one-trick pony of a weapon. Fuck you. <laughs> How dare you. But then, of course, you, like, obviously the, the one drawback with my duels is the fact that the attack is not the best. I, I need to take, like, four shots to kill someone. Essentially. Mm -hmm. sure That's what you gain for that mobility. Long. Yeah. I like in Splatoon that it's not like some balance of how much damage weapons can do, because any weapon is likely to kill within a second. Yeah. But how you can use to counter that. Some abilities do grant you shield. Some weapons grant you some other abilities. It's a lot about mobility, how and your pre and not just your presence in the battlefield, but how you attack. Because whoever gets the first hit mm. is almost always winning, right? Yeah. I like that part of the strategy in the Unless game. It's you not... come back in like a weird wrecking style. You know what? Like there's been games I've played where it's like you just come back in like the last minute somehow. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, well, they... <laughs> just walk. Just walk around for the last five seconds because I got the, the, the roller. And I can just see my line in the, in the, in the last um 
something is something was in my mind a few seconds ago. So then that 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 means I've got nothing else to say. This is my three by three of all the like, and I just jerked off characters half the time. All right, let's let's look at your <laughs> honorable mentions. My Ray honorable mentions. Pocket salt. Bro, like, come on. How can you not? <laughs> Joseph's Clacklers? Clackers, yeah. Clack, clack. Clackers. I mean, I like that. He hit him, he's hitting himself in the head. I like it. I just like that it was unique in this, in anime. Like, I, I've never seen Clackers used like that. And then your third <laughs> is Frankie, of course. Uh, Frankie! <laughs> hunting Rifle. Uh, that was from I Am A Hero. Okay. Storm the hunting break. rifle with a hunting rifle license. Our course Stormbreaker is just an awesome weapon. Mm -hmm. I, thought... I may not like how um it goes against what will happen in Ragnarok, but I do still quite like the weapon, and it's pretty fucking awesome anyway. Store's kitchen knife. I'm Joe Hedero. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. That, that's just like the knife tool to write everything. Because bro, right? it was made by essentially God in this world. Not the lazy prick who lets people borrow whatever he wants, and then the people that borrow it just lose it. And he's like, oh, well, you lost my knife, whatever. So there's just this knife that can just cut through fucking anything in the hands of the main characters. Like, they just found it on the fucking floor. Yeah. Like, what? Why? The climb attacked. Uh, particularly how it's used in, um, both in his lobby and Alabaster. When Nami had to figure out from scratch what the fuck she was doing, and then she still managed to, with party tricks as well, uh, overpower I this Blackfinger? Whatever her name was. It's double finger. Yeah. Double finger, not Blackfinger. Yeah. A bit weird that in the way the Mirage technique was used in any lobby. An interesting fight, nonetheless. And then uh, upgrades against later in the series, thanks to Frankie and Usopp. And now I, I, like, I like the way it's applied. <laughs> Yeah, he's my homie now. And last, you, you wrote all of Akame. I assume you mean the Teigu. Uh, Akame could kill all the weapons there. I never, I didn't put. There are a lot of ones that we could have mentioned that we could have talked about. Yeah, I really like yeah. Mine's rifle, especially. Or Susano. I think we all do. Uh, the way that it functions based on the danger yeah. level of the user. Yeah. The dang I love, I love that idea. <laughs> that that concept made me create something else. Because I just love the idea of, like, the more danger and the more powerful you get. Because it's just that basic fight or flight instinct. But, you know... Yeah, and, and it's weapon. for a sniper rifle. Not like a fucking shotgun, like, where, you're, where imminent danger is right in front of you. You're like, if I pull the trigger, it's gone. It's a sniper, you still have to aim it. It does not function nearly as well in close combat. Yeah. Well, it so it's even more... Lot, like, if... I, I think her sniper can become a semi-machine mach gun, partially. So, like, she can just trigger yes. and slap it. Yeah. Can we have a yeah. rifle? Yeah. I like that it I, I do really like the um application of it too. Mm. Uh and the other weapons in that series uh, as well. Well that's it for this uh list today. I think that's enough of us I don't have any weapons. Oh I do have fly spray in my room. Alright, that, that's good that alright, you're a bunch of flies. <laughs> Alex is gonna use a fly spray on you. Goodbye. <laughs>